ए थर्टी टू इयर ओल्ड सेक्शुअली एक्टिव मेल विथ ए सिंगल पार्टनर ही इज वेरी वेरी डेडिकेटेड टू हिज ओन स्वीट वाइफ हैपीली मैरिड टॉक्सिक हैप्पीनेस इज देर and he doesn't even think of anybody else even closing eyes also the patient was telling even closing eyes also i don't think uh, of anybody sir okay whether you close eyes or uh, uh, open eyes uh, the point is uh, only penetrative sex can bring a sexually transmitted disease so uh, he presented he has no history of promiscuity of course you ask any hiv positive patient he will say oh am i promiscuous no sir i think it is a few hormonal imbalances that has led to the present state of me so patient will be in a denial so the mere statement of patient that i don't have promiscuity does not guarantee always be sure so blurring of vision is there and uh, uh, oral ulceration is there and uh, uveitis is there which is responsible for the blurring of vision so oral genital ulcers and lot of doctors earlier tested him for syphilis hiv everything all were negative but oral genital ulcers are there generally genital ulcers means everybody will think syphilis or sexually transmitted disease not necessarily besets is a vasculitis so it lead to ischemia of tissues including skin and mucus so there is a mucosal ulceration oro genital ulceration that's right vijay and harika rightly pointed diagnosis is besets and uh, pathology test will be positive in them oro genital ulcerations will be there but priyanka won't be positive that's what you need to remember vasculitis is one topic doctor without that there is no paper last time also we wrote in our homework that this week we will listen to the video of vasculitis i don't know how many of you heard huh eh? and reviewed we have it in rheumatology in the online video library please review that physical and radiological features of a 34 year old female coming from mumbai who has pulmonary hypertension have been presented so what is a very characteristic feature of course her nail polish is good because she is from mumbai huh eh? in addition she has a shiny skin and uh, uh so tight a shiny skin and uh, there is a deformity happening into her fingers and when you have taken radiography there is a calcification in the tufts of her phalanges which is being found this these are not cotton swabs don't tell cotton swab don't look like that eh so what is uh, the diagnosis systemic sclerosis systemic sclerosis may if you look at the edrf it is not increased endothelium denied relaxing factor it is uh, not increased um uh, in fact there is an impaired synthesis because endothelial denied relaxing factor has an impaired synthesis what will it lead to non relaxation of pulmonary vasculature leading to pulmonary vasoconstriction leading to pulmonary hypertension so what is the cause of death in the patients of systemic sclerosis ultimately pulmonary hypertension will kill them with a right ventricular failure if you don't treat them so bosenton etc etc in pulmonary hypertension management today only you should review and read now a female newborn child and uh, uh female child but there is a clitoromegaly so you will think of which one virilizing congenital adrenal hyperplasia which is 21 alpha hydroxylase so in 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency how can you detect it in the embryonic life by the rise of 17 hydroxy progesterone see cholesterol becomes 17 hydroxy progesterone and that will become androgen but 17 hydroxy progesterone and progesterone they are supposed to convert into aldosterone and cortisol if 21 hydroxylase deficiency is there then cortisol and aldosterone production get impaired and all that get converted into androgen and that is the reason in a female fetus high androgen level lead to virilization same time since aldosterone is not produced aldosterone is required for retaining our salt they lose the salt into the urine and that is the reason they suffer from failure to thrive 
is the presenting feature. They look like a dehydrated baby because they are losing salt into urine, right? And uh, their 17 hydroxy progesterone levels in amniotic fluid will rise, by which you can be able to make uh, a antenatal diagnosis is what need to be remembered. Now a 12 year old has got the history of measles and now presenting with myoclonic jerks. So, what is the lesion you are seeing in the brain? One of the days in the week we will have a radiology class and uh, we will slowly every week one radiology class and next to 8 to 10 weeks we will revise entire radiology around 35-40 hours. Uh, if you have not attended that, we have the radiology in the online video library. You can review that. What you can make out is white matter lesions are there which are diffusely present. So, sclerosing panencephalitis it is called. One of the complications of measles is what the patient is uh, typically having. So, what do you see in this? In this, it is a chronic form of encephalitis associated with defective measles virus and uh, it is common in the children uh, who develop measles before the age of 2 years and uh, that is how they clinically present. Now, you are seeing a lesion which is a very bright spot and where is this bright spot found in the pituitary? So, what are the causes of a bright spot on pituitary is an important differential diagnosis in radiology. Typically, a phospholipid is the one which leads to a bright spot on MRI of unlike, unlike the other contents is what you have to remember. Now, what do you see in this? Graves disease. While I was composing this question, uh, my niece who is, uh, my sister's daughter who is in 8th class, from distance she looked at the image and said, uh, Mama, is it Graves disease? Then I thought, uh, oh, if my 8th class niece can only discover it, uh, my MBBS nieces will definitely recognize it. So, no big deal. I think am I composing too easy a question, I thought. So, but anyway, some questions should be easy, right? So, what is it because of Graves disease? Smoking, stress, postpartum period, but not iodine deficiency, iodine excess will lead to development of risk factor is what need to be remembered. A 72 year old presented with a thyroid enlargement and what did you see in the ultrasound? There is a mass lesion in the thyroid. And you have done his FNAC. What do you find? You found clusters of cells, papillary morphology, with cleaved nuclei, etc. etc. So papillary carcinoma. So what do you see in papillary carcinoma? Papillary carries a good prognosis unlike follicular is what you need to remember. So, afternoon today, 3 to 8, Dr. Gautam will be coming to honor a surgery class. So, uh, please do attend. Lymphatic spread of an anti-nuclear serum bodies are the ones which you classically come across. A 75 year old who has refractory peptic ulcers, Jollinger Ellison syndrome. What, is, what will they have? A gastrinoma in the head of the pancreas. So, the question comes here. As to what is the most sensitive test to diagnose the Zollinger Ellison syndrome and gastrinoma is the question. Of all the tests, it is the secretin stimulation test which is considered to be the most um, um, uh, sensitive test which can detect gastrinoma at a very early stage is what you need to remember. A 57 year old alcoholic man is being treated for acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. And uh, eventually he developed a uh, uh, leukocytosis, fever, spikes of fever and uh, you discovered that there is an abscess. Abscess always, whether brain or anywhere will have one. If you do a contrast uh, CT, there is a ring like enhancement because of the increased vasculature to the capsule, it will pick up the contrast 
and around the abscess you will have ring like enhancement and the abscess itself will have a low attenuation because it is a necrotic debris that is the reason so that is how you recognize abscess so it is a pancreatic abscess now the risk factors for any pancreatic abscess typically it is the early oral feeding is a risk factor not a late oral feeding and post op pancreatitis early laparotomy injudicious use of the antibiotics etc will lead to development of the pancreatic abscess there is a reason whenever a acute pancreatitis is there with pancreatic necrosis you need to use antibiotics but you should not uh, be overtly using them and uh, it can land the patient in the risk dexa scanning has been done on a 72 year old his radiograph bone biopsy were also presented to you so what do you see on the dexa scanning there is a bowing of tibia at least characteristically you are able to say with an increased uptake i mean with the altered uh, density of the bones not uptake uh, this not radionuclide scan dexa scan uh, you are able to see the altered density then uh, bowing is seen on radiograph and typically what do you find here a mosaic pattern of the bone biopsy so all this falls into diagnosis of what pagets disease so what do you see in pagets in pagets you see a increase of the alkaline phosphatase but a normal calcium normal phosphate what is the cause of the pagets disease Pagets disease kyo hota hai? Typically in the bone, osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Clasts will dissolve, blasts will form. If there is any imbalance between the activity of these two cell populations, then when the bone is forming, it will form in a very haphazard manner. And that is the reason you will find a mosaic pattern of the bone if you do the bone biopsy. But what is so characteristic? Osteoblasts are working. Any work of the osteoblast reflects biochemically as a rise of alkaline phosphatase. That is the reason there is a rise of alkaline phosphatase, but there will be a normal calcium. Now, my question to Vijaya, Vijay, Harika, Saurabh, everybody online, tell the reverse condition. There is a normal alkaline phosphatase, but a high calcemia, hypercalcemia, where do you find? In case of, come on, punch your answer. High calcium, but a normal alkaline phosphatase, where do you find? Very good. Vijay says, multiple myeloma is what you need to remember. Whereas here, what do you have? High alkaline phosphatase with a normal calcium. And tell me one condition where you have calcium normal, phosphate normal, alkaline phosphatase normal, but the bones are weak. Osteoporosis, not malacia. Porosis and osteo malacia or rickets, how will be calcium level? Calcium level will be low, is what you need to understand. So, that is the story which you need to be sure about. So, these are all the image based questions, doctor. Remaining thing, not much of masala, we can go very fast on the theory based questions.